Good morning. This is Don't Waste Your Money consumer reporter John Matarese with a live broadcast, Facebook and YouTube and WPTV.com, talking about consumer news and consumer news that affects you and these days with inflation, these days with product shortages. I tell you, everybody is impacted by consumer news these days. It's just not getting any better, unfortunately. We've seen some of the latest figures from the government. They're saying that inflation is at 8.5%. Meantime, car dealers and other stores report shortages continuing of major items because of that chip shortage and supply chain issues. So it's a, it's a rough year out there. We're doing our best on WPTV News Channel 5 to help you navigate these difficult times. I've done a few reports in the past couple of weeks that really look into this and uh, this see if things are getting better. I mean, that's our, that's our question and what you can do in the meantime until they do get better. And I wanted to start with one that we did a look at appliances because that's one of the big shortages. Let me explain. If your refrigerator or your dishwasher breaks, you know, normally you go to the store, you can get one in about four or five days. Well, depending on what brand you might want or the size of it, it can take six months. If you want a Bosch dishwasher right now and Bosch top rated by Consumer Reports, it can take you one year to get that Bosch dishwasher. So we decided to take a look at how to make your existing appliances last longer so you don't need to get a new one. Check it out. Appliance showrooms are stocked with shiny dishwashers and refrigerators. They're actually individual units. But actually getting one these days can be a nightmare. Some appliances are out 8, 10, 12 months. Some areas are getting better. There are some that are still actually getting worse. Store manager Reese Dorsey says the last thing you need right now is an appliance breakdown so you don't end up frustrated like Carolyn Nerenberg, who told us a few weeks ago about her struggle to get her refrigerator fixed. It's just been kind of a nightmare after nightmare. Yeah, so it's terrible right now. You can't get the new appliance in some cases, and if you need it repaired, the part might be out, and they have to wait two or three months. So what we then looked into was things you can do. We talked to uh, an appliance repair shop, and we went there and said, what, what can you do to keep things running longer? And the biggest thing was clean, clean, clean. I'll give you an example. Your refrigerator, pull it out from the wall, get that bottom panel off if it has one, vacuum out around the compressor and those coils down there. People go years without vacuuming. Everything gets filled with dust that makes the refrigerator work harder and then it fails. So once a year, the refrigerator coils should be cleaned. If you can't do it yourself, have a repair guy come and do it for you or a handyman. Uh, that can add three, four, five years to the life of a refrigerator. The other one is the dishwasher. Many people don't realize that there is a usually a screw and drain at the bottom. You can unscrew it, pull it out, and that's filled with food that gets clogged there. And what happens is as it clogs, the dishwasher doesn't drain properly. It's struggling. It then causes failure. So things like that. Check with your appliance on how to clean it. Appliances need cleaning. And by cleaning them and maintaining them, you'll keep them running longer. The dryer, you want to clean that dryer lint screen every load. Once a year, you should clean out that vent tube that goes outside. You can hire someone to do that or do it yourself. So those are some of the things we talked about. If you have any questions, please post them right here in the comments because I'm happy to answer them because it's really important that you do that. People have said, well, you know, what about my washing machine? You know, I can't open up the back of my washing machine, nor should you. But Tide makes a great washing machine cleaner. You can buy that at Home Depot, Lowe's, grocery store, Publix maybe, uh, or order on Amazon. And the washing machine cleaner, it's a tablet you put in there and just run the load. And what that does is it cleans out a lot of your drains, the mechanisms, it gets rid of that scale buildup that uh, again, can clog the washing machine. So you wanna do some cleaning, you wanna do some maintaining. The washer, the dryer, the refrigerator, uh, ovens, oven and the microwave, you want to just clean them. You want to use uh, either a light cleaner, or if it's the case of the oven, the wall oven or your range, uh, you might want to use some easy off and then wipe it down because stuff builds up, it clogs the airflow, it clogs the heating, it then prevents, it then causes problems. Give you one little caution in cleaning the oven. Some repair shops say never, ever self-clean your oven. Others say you can self-clean, they're built for it, but never self-clean 
the week before a major holiday. In other words, the weekend before Christmas or New Year's or Thanksgiving especially, do not self-clean your oven. There are thousands of complaints about self-cleaning causing a problem where it overheats the electronic controls and then something doesn't work. Be real careful self-cleaning your oven. I personally will not self-clean an oven. I haven't done it in 20 years. I'll use a little bit of the easy off, spray it in there, let it wipe down, put on a mask, put on gloves and wipe it out. But uh, be careful with the oven self-cleaning. Again, if you have any comments, put them up in the uh, comments section. I'm happy to uh, answer questions about uh, your appliances and some of the other issues, because the other good story I had in the past uh, week had to do with mortgage rates hitting 5%. That's making it harder than ever for people in South Florida to buy a new home or condo. I mean, it was one thing when mortgage rates were 3.5% for the past year. Uh, obviously, home prices up sharply, 30%, 40% in the past year or two. Uh, we know that. Anyone looking for a home knows that prices are up. So it's a real, real competition to get a home. So the question is, with mortgage rates going up to 5%, are things finally getting better? Are home buyers dropping out? Does that mean it's now becoming easier to get a home? Well, we talked to a buyer and a realtor. Let's have a look. This sign, bummer, pending, pretty much sums up the housing market in 2022. Homebuyer Nicole Bouchard has spent four months looking and losing house after house to other couples. I felt a little hopeless because um, houses were going before we could even see them. But now she and other buyers have a bigger problem. Mortgage rates that have soared from three and a half to five percent since last year. If the cost of the house in general is still inflated and rising interest rates, you know, what would we be able to afford? Yeah, that's the problem now. You're out there looking at homes. You know, you go through a home, you like it. There's already 10 offers in front of yours. Uh, people are getting outbid by 30 or 50 thousand dollars. It's terrible. Well, her point was, can we even? compete now with the mortgage rates going up because the difference in mortgage rates between four and five percent for a lot of people that's about five or six hundred dollars a month if you're looking at a three hundred or four hundred thousand dollar property so another five hundred a month a lot of people are dropping out saying we can't afford that or you have to try to find a cheaper place and good luck in south florida finding a cheaper place uh, to live in so it's very difficult we spoke to a realtor in that story uh, who said we're starting to see the first cracks in the housing market. We're starting to see uh, fewer offers being made. Just start. I mean, in the past, there might be 10 or 20 offers when a home hits the market in the first couple of days. Maybe now they're only seeing five or six offers. So it's still very competitive. The prices show no sign of coming down at this point. But with 5% mortgage rates, you're starting to see some people drop out. And the one bright spot of 5% mortgage rates is that home buyers may have a little bit more of a chance to get a home because there's going to be less competition as this year goes on. Um, Sandy Rogers posted a comment. Do you have any thoughts about the economy crashing? Well, hopefully it won't crash, Sandy. Uh, <laughs> we're all hoping, but we're already hearing signs, hearing indications that a recession may be on the way. We just had a bad first quarter in the nation's economy where economic growth was down by 1%. A recession is defined by two successive quarters of negative economic growth. That means if the next quarter from April through June also shows negative growth. That's two quarters in a row. At that point, it's officially a recession and uh, not good, but, you know, you get through recessions. There's usually a recession every 10 years, seven to 10 years. So we should be able to get through that okay. And if it cools down the housing market, a lot of the realtors are saying that would be a good thing because prices can't keep going up 25 or 30 percent every year. I mean, that's just, it gets out of control over everyone but multimillionaires at that point for buying a house. So the prices can't keep going up at that rate. And if the interest rates are at 5%, 5.5%, that's going to slow things down. If we start to see a recession, that's going to pull more people out of the market. At that point, there's less competition. Homes will not be selling for 30, 
$50,000 over asking price. So that could be a good thing if there's an economic slowdown. So Sandy, thanks for that. Uh, Carla Langenwalter uh, also posted a comment and please post a comment. Uh, Carla said, thank you for your helpful hints. Carla, I appreciate that. I always like hearing from people with questions uh, about the economy and about consumer issues, about what's going on in the grocery store with grocery prices, gas prices, inflation, please. So put a comment up there. I'm happy to hear it and I'll try to answer answer your question. So what's going on with mortgage rates now is they are up. The latest read we had was 5.25%. Uh, and if they continue moving up, uh, we're going to see a slowdown in the housing market. I would say this summer it's going to uh, because so many more people will not be able to afford that $400,000, $500,000 home purchase. It's just going to be out of reach. So, um, you know, it, there could be a good side to the rising mortgage rates and that it finally slows down this absolutely crazy home market. Uh, Sandy also said, do you know anything about the system that's been going on with China? I believe it's called the credit system. Well, uh, China is, uh, that's a whole nother world over there. I know what's happening is they've been locking down Shanghai uh, because of COVID. They're still in lockdown modes over there. What that's causing is, uh, a drop in demand, also a drop in production. Apple just said yesterday that they're not producing as many iPhones. That iPhone production is down because their factory has been down. Tesla's factory was down for a while. And think of all the other items that are made in China that, uh, you know, when they lock down Shanghai, uh, that creates problems. So in China, the economy is not that good. And how it hits us is through production. We're not getting the iPhones. We're not getting the computer chips. And the last thing we want is more problems getting computer chips because that then makes it hard to get a new car and so many other items that we need. So you got to watch what's going on in China because it does affect us. Karen Caruso says, good information. Thank you for this. Thank you so much for the uh, kind words, Karen. Uh, one other story I did this past week. Um, this one's a little more, a little more positive. You know, we can't keep just reporting a negative, 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 and high prices and uh, high mortgage rates because you know there's got to be something positive. This was positive. People are going back to the office. Uh, offices are calling more and more people back. A lot of people came back in April. More people are coming back in May. Even if it's just for two or three days a week, you know, you spent two years working from home. Now you got to get back in the office, meet with the boss in person, have those meetings again. And suddenly you're like, oh, gee, my clothing is old. It doesn't fit me. I might have put on a pound or two during the COVID shutdown. I need some new outfits for work. Now you go to the mall and you say, good grief, each outfit is going to, cost, I don't care whether you're a man or a woman, each outfit's going to cost you a hundred bucks, if not more. Uh, as a guy, you need a sport coat, you need a shirt, you need a pair of khakis. I mean, right there, you know, even the shirt and khakis are a hundred bucks. You throw on a sport coat for 150. As a woman, you might need a new skirt, new dress. We're talking, you know, a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, hundred dollars, because you spent two years wearing leggings. Uh, and pajamas in some cases. So we said, what can you do if you need to get some back to the office clothing quickly? And we found a couple of places that might help you out. Take a look. All came from Goodwill. Linda Swain needs to upgrade from leggings now that she's no longer working from home, but she's not too worried about breaking the bank. I have pink, lots of pink. Pink spring, spring. Spring, absolutely. <laughs> she's buying her clothing used at Goodwill. Yep. Goodwill. I look fabulous. Feel how fabulous. How much money do you save shopping at Goodwill? A whole lot. Mm -hmm. A bunch. Hundreds. Hundreds. I loved your comment. I look fabulous. I feel fabulous. I'm going to try to use that sometime. That's just a great, great line. She shops at Goodwill. She's a professional. And uh, she went on to show us some of the things that, that she was buying. And they have professional clothing there. People don't realize it. That for $10, you can get a dress, you can get a blouse, you can get a men's sport coat like this for like 15 bucks at Goodwill. I mean, instead of going to the mall and paying 200 for it, it's amazing. And people don't realize that. They think, oh, Goodwill, I don't want to go to Goodwill. You got to take a look, another look at Goodwill, because what they have is some decent clothing that you can wear to the office, $10 a piece. You can just redo your outfit. It's wonderful. Uh, now, some people are like, yeah, but you have to go through rack after rack. You don't know what's there. You don't know what you're finding. Uh, so we also went in that report to a consignment shop. 
And what we did was we visited a consignment shop that sells designer clothing. And so, yeah, you're not going to get things at $10 at a consignment shop selling designer clothes, but you might pay, you know, $30 or $40 for a Ralph Lauren or Tommy Hilfiger outfit. And they even have staff that, that can help you coordinate it. They'll find you the shoes to go with that Tommy Hilfiger outfit. They'll find you a Michael Kors handbag to put with it. And everything is reasonably priced. Uh, they say at consignment shops, a nice consignment shop, it's going to be about a third the price of going to the mall. Post some comments. I'd like to hear if you have any thoughts about that, going to Goodwill or consignment shops to get your clothing. But we were amazed at what we found. Um, I mean, I was finding vineyard vines for like $20, and that stuff's expensive. Uh, we're finding a lot of Ralph Lauren. Uh, we're finding all sorts of uh, name brands at discounts at consignment shops. And the neat thing about a consignment shop is you can bring last year's clothing that doesn't fit you anymore or that you're just tired of. You can bring that, put that out for consignment. So hopefully you'll get, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks for that. And then go buy yourself $100 worth of clothing. Uh, you can almost do, do trading at a consignment shop. So it's really nice uh, at what you can get at a consignment shop. I think this blazer, by the way, came from a consignment shop. So let's see who makes it. Who makes this blazer? Uh, it's a Macy's. So this is a Macy's men's store blazer. Really cute. Uh, it's kind of the, the shorter blazer that you wear with jeans. And I think I got it at a consignment shop for like, $50. So uh, Sandy Rogers says, I bought all my grandkids clothing at Goodwill because they grew so fast. I really got a lot of bargains and beautiful clothing. And now I buy for me too. Sandy, great point. Because uh, yeah, people start at Goodwill by buying clothing for kids. Because if you're shopping for a 10 or 12 year old, they're going to outgrow that clothing. I'm a parent, I can tell you. They're going to outgrow that clothing in six months. You buy them clothing for school in August, and guess what? By January, they need new clothing. So that's why Goodwill is such a great, great place. Uh, Carla Hoff says, I love secondhand shopping. Yeah, secondhand shopping is actually fun. It's actually a lot of fun to do. You just have to give yourself the time because it's not like just running into a store at the mall where everything is coordinated and you say, oh, I love that. Let me see if they have it in a size six. Let me see if they have it in an eight, a 12. Uh, you, you can't do that in a consignment shop or at Goodwill. I mean, because one outfit that you'll find in a size eight, they're not going to have it in a 12. So you really have to look for your size and then see what's there and just be open to new ideas. Uh, it, it's a great, great place to shop, uh, either Goodwill or the consignment shops. Again, Goodwill will give you the clothing for $10, $15, uh, but some of it's, you know, you know, people, I don't want to wear that to work. Uh, you can, you can, people do. Uh, you find some great finds there. That woman we had in the piece uh, found great clothing at, at Goodwill. So, uh, you know, you can't find it there, but really the consignment shops may be the way to go because uh, clothing is expensive at the mall. I can tell you this past week, Macy's has had one of their friends and family sale for everybody who has a Macy's credit card. That gives you 30% off their sale price, and that's the best time to shop Macy's. I mean, I'm at the point where I will shop Macy's if it's a friends and family, because a lot of times whatever they have is 25 or 30% off, and then you put the friends and family 30% off on top of that, and that's where you can get blouses for 15 or $20 at Macy's that are brand new. So that's a great way to, to, uh, to save as well. If anybody had any other thoughts about how to save on clothing, uh, that would be, uh, that would be great too, because, um, you know, I like the friends and family sale. Uh, other people, uh, go to some similar friends and family sales. I know Victoria's Secret has an annual sale coming up. I believe it's in June where there's big markdowns there. So you want to shop the sales. Also, this is, uh, we're at the end of April going into May. This is when you want to start buying spring clothing because they're already in May going to start stocking the shelves at the mall with fall clothing. Spring clothing now will be going on discount and, and that, that's just great because then you can get all your beach wear, you can get all your shorts and get that at 30-40% off. So this is a really good time to buy the spring clothing and uh, and uh, stock up on that. Sandy says, oh, I love this. Uh, buying furniture at Goodwill is great. Of course, I will not buy any bedding or anything that has material like that on a couch. 
but they have a lot of beautiful furnishings there too. Yeah, uh, that is a, a thing to do. Also a Goodwill look for furniture. Uh, we did a story a few weeks back on the ReStore. Uh, that's another one, Habitat for Humanity's ReStore that sells so much furniture and building products. And that is a great, great place to go if you're looking for used furniture. Now they do sell couches, and what they do with couches are they do spray them with bed bug spray. If you're willing to take the risk, or you know, you got a college student who needs something for their apartment, you know, it might be worth considering a couch there because you're gonna get an inexpensive couch for a couple hundred dollars. Uh, if you don't want the upholstered furniture because of the risk of bed bugs, they have plenty of tables, kitchen tables, dining room sets, things like that at either Goodwill or some consignment shops that are furniture consignment or at the ReStore. You can find some, some really good things at the, the ReStore when it comes to, comes to furniture. So it's been great hearing from people and uh, chatting with you. My reports air on WPTV News Channel 5 uh, weekdays at 6 a.m. and at 5 p.m. where we talk about uh, all sorts of things, ways of saving money, ways to avoid scams. We've got some great scam alerts to watch out for that we've talked about. We've got some great uh, money saving options and some money saving options may not be for you. I just did a report on uh, Apple is going to start selling parts for their iPhones where you can buy the little screws, a battery, a glass front, uh, you know, for $50 for your iPhone. Personally, I would never do that. I would go to the Apple store or a store like uh, You Break It, We Fix It, uh, an authorized repair shop. I'm sorry, I'm not going to open up my own iPhone with a teeny tiny screwdriver when I have no idea what I am doing. That's sort of like doing your own surgery. You know, it's like, why do I want to go spend thousands of dollars on heart surgery when I can uh, operate on my own heart? You know, I'm just not going to do that. So I'm not going to open up my iPhone, my iPhone either. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you at WPTV News Channel 5. And as I always say, don't waste your money.